welcome to the show, the Mayor of Waimati, Craig Rowley. Welcome, Craig. You must be feeling chipper yeah. this morning. Yeah, yeah, no, good thanks, Michael. Yeah, we're pretty pleased with ourselves down here. Now, I shall explain to the rest of New Zealand why the, it is the smallest population or the smallest size. Why, Matty? No, we're, I, think we're about, I think we're about third or fourth from the bottom. You've got Kaurau, uh, as you said, Mackenzie, and there's a couple others around. But oh, we're yeah. in, that, in, in, that, in that small council um, uh, demographic, yeah. 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 How many staff do you have, to, or do you contract uh, most of it about, out? I, I think there's about, no, 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 we all do it all in-house, about 65. Mm. Okay. Um, now, uh, and I mean, there'll be some people sort of curling their lips at what we're about to hear, but yesterday we talked to the Christchurch City Council because they are fighting desperately to get chlorine out of their drinking water. But yesterday, the Waimati District Council was adjudged by water experts to have the best tasting, smelling, available drinking water in New Zealand. Yep. That's right. Yes. Yep. Uh, our, uh, it was one of our rural supplies, um, Otayo. It's, it's uh, a rural supply. It's a deep water bo- uh, bore that delivers um, drinking water to uh, a, a portion of our residents out in the Otayo area. So, you know, fantastic, fantastic news that uh, we've got best drinking water taste in New Zealand. So absolutely great. Now, the really interesting thing is that judges taste wine every year. They've been having wine competition for 50, 60 years in this country. It means a big deal. Does it mean something to you to have the best water in New Zealand? Oh, absolutely. You know, it just one it shows that um, you know small rural councils can deliver good, clean, fresh tasting mm. drinking water, uh, and two, it, I think it's a vindication of the hard work that our staff do to make sure that um, you know our infrastructure and everything's up to standard, and we're delivering really good quality water. Which, um, and I have to be honest, there was an ulterior motive to asking you on the show this morning, Craig, which is yep. sort of, I'm glad you've touched on it, because I was going to move there. Yep. It's sort of a upraised digit, isn't it, to three waters reform? Oh, Michael, I wouldn't go down that track. <laughs> but uh, it, it's, um, it's, it's, it's quite nice to, to prove that, um, you know, small rural councils can deliver the best quality drinking, the best smelling and tasting drinking water in New Zealand. Yes, and um, it's so, safe and uh, nobody's dying. Got, yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, so, you know, I think that... Uh, um, we may be signalling that um, maybe we uh, should be left to get on with what we do well. Well, and that was the other thing, because just to explain to those who are listening and who are going, Pah! and some people are when they go and drink their water in their particular areas, um, the three, or the, there were four finalists, Timaru, uh, I think yep. Geraldine in specific, Palmerston North, that was very interesting, uh, yourselves and the Western District uh, Council, which I think is Fokatani. Um now, you're all provincials um, and, or, and or rural councils. Um, you're the ones that have been singled out as Three Waters as failing in the infrastructure, not doing everything. And yet, ironically, there you go. The four finalists and you win. Um, <laughs> does, this, does this strengthen seriously your bow to um, the, any incoming government that leave us alone? We've got this under control. Well, it, it, we think it certainly does. And, and listen, you know, we've got, this is one of six rural schemes that we've got. You know, we have challenges with other rural schemes. Uh, you may have, you know, seen recently, you know, we had a nitrate issue in our lower wire uh, drinking scheme down at, uh, down by Glen Avey. Um, that's, that's now backed um, well within the, the um, approved limits. Um, you know, we just put a $1.7 million treatment plant in there. So, um, you know, I, I think it signals to me that, that we are capable, more than capable, of looking after our own infrastructure and delivering a really good quality product at a, at a good price. Um, and, and that's all we're asking is um, let us let us get on and, and do what we do well uh, and, and give us some help for those ones that are having issues. As you look around, I mean, I, I'm in your neck of the woods, for example, the infrastructure that seems to be in real problems... One of them would be Clutha, uh, which is not, well, sort of quite a bit south south of you and obviously south of Dunedin. But Dunedin itself, it's had problems with its water supply and reticulation as well. Does it irritate you that you're being sacrificed still 
um, in lots of ways. In fact, your future is non-existent if you take all your water infrastructure away from Waimedi, uh, Craig, that you're being sacrificed because some councils, some, have let the side down. Yeah, and, and yeah, it does get frustrating. And I guess the, you know, our answer to that is help those that need help. You know, put, put the resources and, and the money into those that need help. Uh, you know, we're quite happy for them to get assistance to bring their infrastructure up to a standard. And, and listen, we, we may need assistance with some, with, with, um, some of our rural uh, schemes in, in the future, but um, let's, let's just um, bring the, the uh, standard up across the country by targeting the assistance of those that need it. But uh, one of the things, though, and could you clarify for the rest of us, because there seems to be some confusion around it, the rural schemes, maybe this one, which has got the prize-winning water drawn from it, they won't necessarily be picked up, will they, under three waters? Well, th that's that's the big the big question. We don't, this, and these are the things. Some of the things we don't know is that, uh, and the thing is that um, uh, if you take away our urban scheme, our staff work on the urban schemes as well as the rural schemes. So if you take away the staff from our urban schemes, then who then who looks after the rural schemes? Um, you know, you can't leave them stranded by themselves with no expertise to look after them. So um, uh, it's it's a, it's an interesting question as to what happens to the rural schemes, um, but uh, yeah, the, you, you know, they've still got to have staff looking after them, making sure that they're meeting compliance and making sure that the water's still getting delivered. So without our staff doing that, I don't know who's going to do the job. No, no, do I? Um, just um, and also thinking. Waimati, uh, neighbouring councils are obviously Tamaru, which is not very far from Waimati. Yep. Uh, Mackenzie, neither is that either. Where does that go? That's fairly, isn't it? That's uh, that, that boundary there. Yeah, it goes there. up as far as Mount, Mount, it goes up as far as Mount Cook. That's uh, right. Across to, across to, um, uh, Amarama. And it's in a, we, we neighbour on, on, we neighbour on, um, Timaru, Mackenzie and, um, Waitaki. Right. Okay. In lots of ways, um, the government's probably right about one thing, that the four of you should be sharing, I guess, staff and water services and things like that too. Um, yeah? Or do you go, no, you do need to be quite silo -y about it? No, no. And, and, and uh, we don't argue that point at all. In fact, uh, when the three waters was first mooted, we said that we'd like to work with our neighbouring councils uh, Mackenzie and Timaru to see if we could do shared services or combine pro, uh, 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 purchasing and things like that, and we got told that we weren't thinking big enough. Right. So the idea was you had to have Dunedin and the whole of Southland as well, basically, and go all the way up to Canterbury. Well, obviously, yeah. Well, obviously, the, the the entity they were looking at the time was the four entity model, which has now become the you know the affordable ten entity model. Um, co governance is still part of that, despite everything. Uh, they've now. And this was the other thing. Sorry, just to explain, my wife is an elected member of the Central Otago District Council, so I should declare that interest. Um, and she tells me, from the CODC's point of view, that they are a little confused now at the announcement that the Three Waters has been pushed back at least two years because they're basically not ready. Um, and so that's meant... God, do we do a long-term plan? What are we going to do over the next two years? Um, how can we hold on to our staff, which seems to be a big problem? Have you got the same problem? Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. You know, all a, all a medium to small rural council, well, every council, not just a small and medium ones, have that exact same problem. You know, one minute the three waters is out, now, now it's back in again with the look when it comes to long-term plan. You know, obviously we have to plan because we've got a rate, rate for the services that we provide, and the only way we can do that is through our annual and long-term plan process. Um, you know, it... it, it, it it uh, raises a lot of issues with the with the extension. Not so much for us, but I know you know um, some councils were were looking to offload their three waters assets. Uh, they're now going to carry them for another two years. Um, so there's there, there's all sorts of unanswered questions, and it is and it's difficult. Um, it's it's a shocking situation for the staff. And as far as you know, who am I working for? Am I working for? The new three waters entity. Am I working for the Waimati District Council? Um, you know, there's there's just so much uncertainty within the whole industry at the moment. It's um, appalling, as well. What I think it is. 
And it won't necessarily be uh, improved if there's a change of government, or will it be, Craig? Um, well, obviously, National have said that they'll repeal the Three Waters legislation and return the assets to the communities. Um, they've definitely, you know, the, the, the um, conversations that I've had um, with the National Party have been that, uh, you know, they're, they're going to, uh, it's up to individual councils to decide um, what best suits their region mm. uh, and their area. So, you know, we, we would, we're we quite keen to, you know, start having talks with our neighbours. If, if there's a change of government, we'll have talks with our neighbours about you know, how, how we can deliver uh, our three waters um, throughout the region uh, the most effective and efficiently as possible. Mm. Okay, Craig, um, thank you very much. Congratulations again to your team. Um, nice to talk to you. Um, have you had a wallaby pie since the last time I talked to you? No, I haven't actually. I must get down to the to the bakery and get one. But um, you're more than welcome to come down and try one any time, Mo. Well, I I'm travelling down to Omaru quite often, so you're not very far away. Thank you very much. Nice no to well. talk to you, Craig. Okay. See you later, mate. Thanks, okay, bye bye. Um, that's Craig uh, Rowley, the mayor of Waimati, um, award-winning water. But you know why we had Craig on the show, don't you? Yes.